Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the brand new NVIDIA Shield K1 tablet. And the folks from NVIDIA sent this along to the show for us to take a look at. There isn't much difference between this one and the one they released a year ago. It's cheaper, it's $100 less expensive. Uh, they took some things out of it, so there's no stylus in here anymore. Uh, they also took out the charger. So if you want to charge it, uh, you're going to need an old phone charger or something like that. It does use a standard micro USB cable here, so chances are you probably have something that can charge this device. But uh, no charger, uh, no stylus and that was how they were able to get that price point uh, down to 100 bucks. But it's the same specifications as we had before. So a K1 processor, uh, two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, a really nice looking 1920 by uh, 1200 display. So a little bit uh, different orientation than uh, 1080p, but you can uh, plug it into your TV or monitor here with the HDMI connector. It is 4K capable. Uh, so you can get it hooked up to your 4K television in its native resolution for uh, apps that won't tax it too much. Uh, front facing stereo speakers here, which sound very nice. Uh, and you also have uh, the memory card slot here for augmenting some of that storage because 16 gigs is not a lot for a gaming tablet, but I did find that a lot of games were letting me uh, install onto the SD card, so we're able to do that. Uh, so performance-wise, this really is the same as we saw last year. Our 3D Mark benchmark came in at 29,561. Uh, that compares just almost identically to where we were last year. It's a little bit slower, and I think it might just be due to the fact that maybe the uh, 5.1 Android operating system that's installed on here might have a little bit more overhead. Uh, so it's a negligible difference difference in performance, a little bit slower, but uh, nothing that I think anyone's really going to notice. And uh, compare that to the score that we saw on the iPad Air 2, which is still kind of the current uh, consumer flagship on the Apple side, 21,703. I think you'll see probably similar scores out of the new iPad Mini 4. Uh, and uh, 27,192 for the iPhone 6S, which is still the fastest phone we've tested here on the channel so far this year. Uh, but look at the NVIDIA Shield TV, which is their flagship television device, uh, 47,728 with the X1 processor. So this has the uh, prior generation chip, but this chip is still uh, pretty much where most phones are and most tablets are right now, if not better. So they really were well ahead of the game a year and a half ago. Uh, so that video that I did last year, which I'm going to link above, uh, tested a lot of the native and Android performance, and I think, uh, and, and just from using it today, uh, it's still very much the same tablet from that standpoint. So check out that video if you want to see how a lot of things perform. I covered gaming, uh, emulation, a lot of basic tablet functions, and in this video, what we're going to do uh, is talk more about the things I didn't cover back then. So we're going to look at how the Shield controller connects with it. Uh, we're going to look at how we can stream games from my gaming PC. We're also going to look at game recording and capturing with the vi video camera on here, uh, as well as streaming to Twitch. So there are a lot of things that we didn't cover before that we are going to cover now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is attach the optional cover to this device. There is a specialized cover for it. Uh, it is magnetic, as you can see, and what this does is it acts like a cover like you'd have on an iPad or something, but it also uh, works to prop the device up, very similar to how the Apple Smart Cover works too, so that you can uh, get a better angle on it here. Uh, so that's a $40 option. The controller, which is something you definitely wanna get if you're going to be doing some serious gaming, uh, is another $50 or $60. So there is some, some cost escalation here, but uh, the entry level is still less than it was a year and a half ago. Go, so that is a good thing. What I'm going to do real quick is just load up the Shield Hub, and I've got uh, my PC games loaded up here. You've got some other options here, so we can go uh, into the GeForce Now service, which is NVIDIA's uh, over-the-internet game streaming service. I covered that in my Android TV review. It does work pretty nicely on here, too. Uh, there's also uh, native Android games, too, that you can find through the Hub. But what I'm going to do is actually connect to my gaming rig, which is right next to me here, and we're going to load up the new Star Wars Battlefront on that computer right now. It takes a second for it to load, uh, but as it's loading, what you can do basically is if you have a uh, gaming computer that has an NVIDIA, I think it's a 650 or 660 uh, GPU or better, uh, you can stream games over your local network to the device. Now I've covered game streaming and how it works uh, in a video that I'm linking above. So you have questions about some of the mechanics of that, uh, you can check out that video. What I have found is that uh, streaming over Wi-Fi actually works really nicely on here. Uh, better than I saw with some of the Steam stuff. So they've really got a good uh, protocol working here. So here you go, we've got Battlefront loaded up. I'm gonna go pop into a quick mission real quick and you can see how this performs. All right, here we are playing Star Wars Battlefront. This is streaming over from my gaming PC, which is actually right behind me, but uh, the wireless signal is coming up from my basement. So this is coming up from two floors uh, over my home network here, and it seems to be working pretty well. So uh, decent looking image quality here, good frame rates. Uh, you can see here the uh, latency. If I can just keep it in my D-pad there a couple times, you get a feel for how fast everything responds. So uh, pretty much on par with every streaming solution I've tried, uh, maybe a little bit better over Wi-Fi than I typically see. So this is actually working quite nicely. And this is probably a good 
uh, you know, kind of test case for uh, having a Wi-Fi access point at a pretty good distance away. Now it doesn't support wireless AC, uh, it's just wireless N. It does have a two by two radio on board, uh, but if you really want to get the best performance, they do recommend uh, connecting the tablet via ethernet. And if you do that and you're connected via HDMI, uh, you can get 1080p 60 performance out of this, which will look uh, really, really nicely. Now, another thing you can do while you're playing here is pull down uh, the back arrow on the controller and uh, you can set this to record your gameplay footage. And that's not just for streaming games from your PC. It'll record uh, anything going on on the tablet. You can record both of the internal memory uh, or to a memory card. So I was uh, actually playing around with it a little earlier tonight while I was playing Battlefront streaming from my gaming PC, just like I'm doing now. Uh, you can see some footage as to how that looks. Uh, so I did a little bit of that. And then you can also overlay uh, the webcam on the front of the camera to, of, the, of the device too so you can do some game commentary uh, while you're playing and while you're recording if you do a lower quality setting you can also uh, stream it over to Twitch as well which we're going to do in a second. Now you're going to notice when you're looking at some of this gameplay footage that uh, the footage is not actually uh, filling the screen and that's because right now uh, this is set to the uh, display that's built into the tablet which is a 1920 by 1200 display. Uh, mo most HD televisions are 19 1920 by 1080. So if you want to get a recording that fills the screen, uh, you should connect it via HDMI and turn off the mirroring because if you mirror, it's going to uh, give you that weird look. And in the other video, I covered uh, that example of, as to how it looks uh, when you do the mirroring versus the regular 1080 connection. So when you do connect it up, uh, you definitely want to turn off mirroring if you want to fill your screen. All right, so let's check out Twitch. I've already started my broadcast here. You just uh, invoke it the same way you record. I can record here at the same time if I want to do that to get a recording locally as well uh, as sending off into the Twitch uh, ecosystem there. So what I'm going to do now uh, is just unpause my game here and start playing once again. And I am uh, playing the PSPP emulator. This is a game called Zionide and Metal Jesus Rocks, who's one of my favorite retro gamers on uh, YouTube, was recommending this the other day. So I figured I would check it out. And what I'll do here is show you what we're getting on Twitch right now. So it actually is broadcasting uh, quite nicely here. Maybe I'll go full screen on my computer here so you can get a better feel for uh, the quality of the broadcast. So we'll switch over to camera three, which is our computer, so you can get a feel for that. So uh, we're emulating an Android uh, PSP game on Android uh, and streaming that over to Twitch right now. I believe also that there are ways to uh, pull up the chat overlay also while we're doing that. So I can hit this uh, button there and I believe we should be able to see our chat stream yep, down there at the bottom, although nobody's chatting with me at the moment. I don't do much on Twitch, so I don't get uh, too much traffic on there, but I could do that and I can also go back into here uh, pull this menu back up again and also uh, get that webcam going at the same time so I can have myself overlaid on there uh, with my chat window that's visible to me and uh, pretty soon we should see uh, both of those things on the live stream as we're playing here once it catches up. So uh, you can see now that that chat window is down there at the lower left hand corner of the screen so people can see that and there we go. It's a little bit of a delay to twitch to get uh, my camera up but now I've got uh, my live camera going while we are streaming to Twitch uh, from our tablet running a PSP game in emulation. So there's a lot of, a lot of capability uh, in a little tablet here. And what's amazing again is that uh, you know, a year and a half ago, this was uh, really ahead of its time and it still is uh, very competitive and well ahead of its time and now it costs a little bit less too. So uh, battery life on here is not gonna be the best when you're really pushing the hardware. So I would say you probably get three to five hours of uh, active gameplay depending on what you're doing. Uh, if you're just kind of tooling around doing you know, the kind of tablet-y kind of stuff, uh, you're looking at maybe six to eight hours. So uh, you know, it is going to consume some power while you're gaming heavily on it. Uh, so you definitely want to you know, keep uh, some battery, you know, maybe one of those big external batteries or something nearby uh, to keep it charged up. So that is the new NVIDIA Shield K1 tablet. It was a good product a year ago, still a great product now. I can definitely recommend it to gamers who want to do the sorts of things that you just saw in this video. I definitely do check out the video I did a year and a half ago because that one uh, really does show you a lot of the native Android performance. But uh, as I always like to do on this channel, if there are things that I missed or things that you want to see, uh, please leave me some comments below. And if I get a little time, uh, we're in the holiday rush right now, but I should have some time to do some follow-ups in the not too distant future. So I definitely want to start uh, getting some of your suggestions. So definitely leave me some comments below of things to try out uh, that I didn't cover in this video or the one we did earlier. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.